the newspaper and the life and times of Ben Bradley TV review. John Maggio and number 39 semicolon s documentary about legendary newspaper editor Ben Bradley could not be more relevant at a time when such legacy media as the New York Times and the Washington Post are leading the journalistic pack with their reporting on the current presidential administration. Chronicling its subject and number 39 semicolon s life and career in fascinating detail, the newspaper man. The life and times of Ben Bradley will prove catnip to journalism and political buffs, not to mention anyone who cares about the free press and its role in our democracy. The film, which recently garnered a PGA Award nomination, makes its debut on HBO on Monday, December 4. The documentary begins by implying parallels between the Post and No. 39 semicolon s reporting on the Watergate scandal and Trump decrying the mainstream media as fake news. In a clip from an interview with Mike Wallace, Bradley says that the press has to hunker down in the face of attacks from those who don and No. 39 semicolon t like its reporting. Our business is not to be loved, but to go after the truth, he says. The newspaper man delivers an extensive biographical portrait, using Bradley and No. 39 semicolon s own gravelly voice to narrate the film via excerpts from the audiobook version of his autobiography A Good Life. It includes such biographical elements Bradley having suffered from polio as a child, graduating from Harvard by the skin of his teeth, marrying in later genes Tall Tons Tall, whom he describes as the first and only girl I had slept with serving in the Navy during World War II, which he largely spent in the South Pacific, and fulfilling his longtime dream of becoming a foreign correspondent, working for Newsweek. Bradley always knew he was the luckiest son of a bitch in the world, comments Jim Lehrer, one of many notable figures providing commentary. One of the most interesting sections concerns the close friendship between Bradley and his second wife, Antoinette, Tony, Pincott with then-Senator John F. Kennedy and his wife Jackie. The relationship continued even after JFK became president, raising considerable eyebrows because of the potential conflict of interest. The documentary includes home movie footage and audio recordings of the foursome sailing and golfing and it reveals that JFK relentlessly pursued Tony romantically, even assaulting her at a party. He also had an affair with her sister Mary who was murdered under mysterious circumstances in 1964. As one might expect, the film spends much time on Bradley and No. 39 semicolon s lengthy tenure at The Post. After being named executive editor, he revitalized the paper, bringing it to national prominence and raising its profile in D.C. thanks to such innovations as the introduction of its style section. Henry Kissinger amusingly comments. They covered my social life more intensely than I thought the national interest required. The film includes long sections devoted to such important events as the paper and No. 39 semicolon s legal battle to publish portions of the Pentagon Papers, the subject of Steven Spielberg on No. 39 semicolon s upcoming film The Post, featuring Tom Hanks as Bradley, and, of course, its Watergate investigation. The air was thick with lies and the president was the lead liar, Bradley comments. John Dean observes that The Post was the only major news outlet really pursuing the story, and we hear an excerpt from Nixon and No. 39 semicolon s audio tapes in which he plots a revenge against the paper. Thanks in large part to all the president and No. 39 semicolon s men. The film of Woodward and Bernstein and No. 39 semicolon s best-selling book about their reporting. Bradley became a national celebrity, and it was clear to everyone who knew him that he loved the attention. His tenure at the paper was not without its missteps, as illustrated by the infamous Janet Cook episode in which the recently hired African-American female reporter won a Pulitzer Prize for what was later revealed to be a completely fabricated story about an eight-year-old heroin addict. Throughout, the film weaves in Bradley and No. 39 semicolon s personal life including his third marriage to Sally Quinn, 20 year his junior, and his joy at becoming a father again in his 50s. The newspaper man benefits greatly from the presence of many of Bradley and No. 39 semicolon s friends and colleagues who speak about him in adoring or near worshipful terms. Besides the aforementioned, they include Tom Brokaw, Norman Lear, 
Tina Brown, Richard Cohen, Dan Graham, David Remnick, Robert Redford and, of course, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. But at and number 39 semicolon s Bradley himself, via the narration or clips from interviews, he tells Charlie Rose, for example, that his only regret is the pain he caused his first two wives, that gives the film its most resonant moments. Premieres Monday, 8 p.m. ET slash PT, HBO.